All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to Unconcise Math with Jason Osborne. Uh, we're going to look at another Unconcise Math production today. Posted recently, uh, uh, made a blog post about intrinsic versus extrinsic geometry, and that's what we're going to look at today. So now that we've got the credit screen going, let's uh, move on. Um, you can see here uh, we're on unconcisemath.com. Um, and down here we can link to the posts. And the posts, uh, we've got some new posts for this year. So let me zoom in a little bit and we'll go ahead and get into this post. Uh, you can see here that we've got a couple different features for this post. You can link to this YouTube video that you're watching now. There'll be an Apple book link um, that's got some additional technical resources. But uh, we're going to look at the, this post on intrinsic and extrinsic geometry and the metric tensor and try to do this in an illustrated fashion. OK, so let's go ahead and jump into this post. You're, you're welcome to read it, but I thought this video might be a might be a good way to uh, just kind of get into some of the imagery and talk about it as we go. OK, so we're looking over here. Here's the post. Um, I wanted to kind of start this. Uh, um, with this idea that maybe uh, you can think about collecting four different materials together. Maybe you got a piece of gray paper, a piece of pink transparent paper, and maybe a, a spotlight, and maybe um, on that spotlight you've drawn a star. And you maybe have uh, set up a situation that looks like this. So you've got some, some light coming from this, uh, uh, some light coming from this spotlight or flashlight, it shines down onto this transparent surface. Some of the light comes through the surface and, and hits the piece of gray paper underneath, and you can see that star shape as a shadow. Okay, um, you know, and if that piece of paper were to, to move between the star uh, spotlight and uh, the gray paper, you know, you still get the, the shadow of the star uh, cast onto the piece of gray paper, right? And so that's no matter how that pink piece of paper is oriented, okay? There's lots of interesting more shapes out there. Uh, there's this shape called a helicoid. This uh, shape will appear throughout the post. So we've got this helicoid shape. And, you know, if you wanted to make your piece of paper form that kind of shape and then redo the kind of light casting experiment. You can see here that uh, as this helicoid kind of rotates around that only parts um, of the helicoid that uh, are exposed to the light are going to have the, the star shadow cast onto them. Okay, So as this uh, piece of paper moves underneath you can see that the star is being um, um, created as a shadow, okay? But that uh, star is only created on the parts of the surface that are, are accessible to the light, and that's what we're seeing here in this picture. So as the, the, the pink piece of paper does not have a star shape on it, it just has a shadow that's created from uh, this spotlight in three-dimensional space, okay? So what we're writing about here in this part is, is this idea that extrinsic geometry is that there is this notion that there is some sort of star out here in space, and this pink piece of paper um, is kind of getting in the way of the light from the star, and this shadow is being created on the surface, okay? So extrinsic geometry will allow us to, to study the surface, right, by studying the star shadow created uh, from the, the three-dimensional space. And we can see here that the tools of, of space can be used to, to make uh, geometrical measurements like lengths and angles and stuff like that. If you're a person walking around on this spiral here, we can talk about how far did you walk and those kind of ideas can be measured with strings and rulers and stuff like that because this person is in three-dimensional space walking along, okay? Uh, we would like to try to transition to, to the intrinsic viewpoint, and I have a little thing you can read there, but essentially we're imagining that, that perhaps this uh, paper, the pink paper, has been replaced with some sort of photosensitive paper, and if that um, paper is exposed to light, then, then the image of the star is photographically embedded into the, into the helix, 
okay, or the helicoid in this case. And so here we can see that, that uh, there's no separating the star shape from the surface. As the surface moves, the star moves with it because the star is embedded into the surface as a photographic image. And so talking about uh, this idea, how would you measure lengths and angles and how far is it uh, from point uh, on the, the photographic surface to a point B on the photographic surface? You know, and, and you can't imagine the fact that you are now uh, in three-dimensional space any longer. Like this surface, you have to imagine it intrinsically um, and without reference to three-dimensional space. That is the essence of intrinsic geometry. So we continue in this post and um, kind of lay out, this is the kind of stuff right here you might see in a mathematical document lots of numbers and formulas and stuff like this and, and this is what we're building up to um, but this might be a step too far uh, without some sort some more um, you know introductory ideas behind um, the geometry so uh, this is what we're going to we're building up to these kind of this more technical things and so I you know the, in this post we talk we talk about um, uh, an analogy with um, some three contestants, uh, black, uh, blue, and pink, kind of running a race. And some of them, one of the contestants is just stepping across the race course. That's the blue one here. You've got this pink character that's doing different uh, jumping instead of stepping. And then you have this uh, black contestant that is kind of um, skipping across the course. Okay, and we, uh, the idea here is to kind of motivate this idea uh, of a definition I picked up from the internet on something that's called a metric, or what is the definition of a metric of metrics? And we've got here the uh, this idea of a, a metric is this kind of way of dividing up the race course. Here you've got the, the course uh, happening from beginning to end. And you've got uh, the different ways that p the contestants moved across the course is dividing the course up into different kinds of sections, blue, pink, or black sections, right? So this is the idea of a metric, like dividing something, uh, a section uh, up into smaller subsections. So this is kind of what we're discussing at this part of the post. Okay, and there's some computations that we can do and, and kind of relate this back to the intrinsic versus extrinsic, um, the extrinsic versus intrinsic idea. And, um, and then it's possible that uh, there's a different way to divide up the course into what, what is called a variable metric. And this simple analogy, we wanted to try to extend to the idea of a, of a curved surface. And so we kind of make this big transition in the in the post to, you know, a surface as a as a mountain, a mountain, and you know, with some contour lines that we're seeing here. And this is unfamiliar terminology. We can kind of think about a, a, a surface as being divided up into these different planar sections, um, and then drawing and seeing where those planar sections intersect the surface. We get these these lines that are being created, the elevation lines or the contour lines of the surface, right? So we're going to try to extend the metric idea that we did with the the race course idea and try to talk about it in the context of topological maps. Here's what the the mountainous uh, section looks like, and we've got these three different two circles in one straight line that we're seeing here. Uh, those correspond in the topical, topographical map here, there's some different topo, topo maps. They correspond to these different trails that you might be seeing on the, on the surface of the mountain, right? So we're just uh, in this post trying to kind of lay out a lot of visuals um, for topological maps. And here we've got some different animations you can see that kind of help us um, kind of connect up with where we're going which is to uh, talk about how far distance, how far have we, uh, has a person who's walking along the, the mountain actually traveled. There's the, the distance that they're traveling along the ground. You can see here in the topo map, they're moving along a circle. 
but on the surface they're actually traveling quite a bit more distance because of the elevation gain and all that kind of stuff. So this is what we're trying to motivate in this post uh, pictorially. And you'll remember um, we've got um, ideas like most complicated formula in this post is the Pythagorean theorem. We're trying to figure out how to measure this distance that you've walked along the, along the this trail that leads to the top of the mountain. And you know, idea might be to use the Pythagorean theorem, but you can see here that that's going to underestimate the distance that we're actually uh, walking along the hill and. We kind of introduced this idea of doing a bunch of Pythagorean theorems and and we're just kind of making a, some progress towards this idea of a metric on the surface and, and relating this to, to distance being traveled, okay? So Pythagorean theorem is, is an interesting result that uh, in isolation just does one triangle, but if you do multiple triangles, we can extend this to actually figure out how to compute the distance along the surfaces. Okay, so it's possible to do that with some mathematical formulas, uh, but in this post I was interested in the, um, the idea of, and here's how you would do this mathematically, you could break the curve into a bunch of parts and then add up the lengths of the little um, straight line segments. So this is the, what this graphic is showing here, and you can read about that in the post. But some interesting visuals that hope uh, hope help with the the reading of this document. Um, the idea we'd really like to try to transition to to the topographical map because that's where our metrics going to occur. So we've got a bunch of visuals here, and here we're trying to now transition to doing some of these distance computations in the topographical map, okay? And here you can see them. It's just uh, basically the Pythagorean theorem if we, uh, if we look at it carefully, okay? Which we tried to do in this post, okay? Um, some more images and, and what we're trying to do here is touch base with uh, the, you can see down here in the lower right corner, um, uh, that we are trying to, I guess right over here somewhere, yeah, this is where we are, um, looking at the pictures that we saw maybe from our race, our race analogy with the different dividing up a line into different colored sections, and we relate this back to the topographical map, and then eventually, um, as we keep going along here, lots lots to read, but this is why I wrote down so you can uh, read a little bit. But as we're trying to break uh, the 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 straight line into multiple many many pieces here, here we can see that we've broken this uh, line up into fifty pieces, um, each segment being about 0.03 in 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 um, space, these red dots, but here we've got the, the segments on the mountain part, how far you've actually walked, broken into about 50 different pieces, right? And the idea behind the metric tensor is going to be essentially helping us figure out an actual formula without having to rely on the topographical map, a formula to compute the, the lengths of uh, these, these segments without having to read the contour lines of the, of the topographical map, which can be challenging and time consuming, okay? So this is uh, where we, we touch base with the, the mathematics of this section, the metric tensor, and, um, and, and then we will, and then we conclude. Okay, so this has been a pretty illustrated introduction to the to the metric tensor, um, and there's some mathematics behind here, and we don't go through a lot of technical mathematics in this introductory post. Uh, if you want to see the technical mathematics, you can, um, let me go back here to the Apple Book link for this post, and this is where we get into some more of the technical details, okay? Those technical details here in the Apple book will link you to, and here's just a, a little sample of what you might see in that this book. 
Um, you can see this is going to be an interactive book. You can see here that uh, we start the book with an uh, introduction to what we've already talked about um, from our introductory um, introduction to the metric tensor, which we just went over a second ago. And you can see here, if we click around in the book, you know, here's our, our mountainous section. There's our uh, contour curves on a mountain that we talked about. Um, let me see, there is the, the mountainous park itself. We, we saw, saw those in the, um, in the illustrated introduction. We were talking about the mountainous park and the different distances along the trails, which kind of gets the whole metric tensor idea going. And then we talked about, of course, the topographical maps. Okay, so this is uh, where we kind of came from. And we get into some more of the technical details. Again, there's the um, our, our star uh, problem, the intrinsic versus extrinsic idea. And we've got some more detailed um, things to read uh, in the, the technical Apple book. Um, and you'll see some computations uh, um, where I, you know we're trying to touch base with the, the mathematics that you might see. Um, and then we kind of do some computations on this cylinder to, to relate the metric tensor back to lengths and angles on a surface. And this is essentially what the, the Apple book resources will look like, uh, some interactive documents. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what we have. So if you're interested in more of those details, then by all means, uh, check out the, uh, the, Apple book resources here and you know if you're before you get into the technical details yeah definitely check out the illustrated introduction to the metric tensor okay so I will leave you all to um, the, the first post of this 2023 year for me and if you're interested in other posts of course that we've done in the past you can check out year 2022 where we had quite a few posts um, and uh, you'll see we saw the, the curvature story and a, a variety of different posts related to differential geometry and we're just continuing the differential geometry theme uh, in the 2023 season. All right, so thank you all for your patience and your time. I look forward to uh, any comments you want to put in this YouTube video. Thank you.